Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello and welcome. It is I, Trooper SJP, and it is Thanksgiving, and my chair's too low. Ha ha. Hi. And now my mic's too low. All right. Hey, everybody. Wait. I'm going to mute this sound for you. And... Don't. One moment. This is too loud. For me. We're in the money. And this master gain is not impacting my sound at all, which I think is weird, but that's fine. Uh, give me a second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hello, my headphone mix. How are you doing? Now it's not making any sounds. Wait. There it goes. I just turned it down so it's not so loud for me. Now everything is perfect. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Trooper SJP, and happy Thanksgiving. It is uh, Thanksgiving. It is our Mac Gaming Thursday, and I am here to play some Disco Elysium with you all. Hey, Atomica! Atomica! You hope everyone had a good birthday? Um... Yeah, everybody, hope you all had a good, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, but uh, Atomica just gave me an excuse to sing, uh, you know, We're in the Money by Ginger Rogers as she sang it in the film Gold Diggers of 1933, which means uh, singing it in Pig Latin. And so, without further ado, Earway and hey, the anime. Earway and hey, the anime. Eve way up, gay lay up, way 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 and we and we, we see the end, they look up the eye, got in the, the eye, we're in the money, we're in the money, we've got a lot of what it takes to get along. E oh, thank you for those bits, Atomica, and thank all of you all who've been hanging out uh, and been here, you know, it's that kind of moment where last uh, Friday, we had our stream of, last Saturday, we had our streamiversary stream, and uh, it's Thanksgiving, and it's going to be the end of the year. It's just like a great all-around sort of moment of community and reflection. Atomica says, ever think anyone was ever at a show, heard that, and went, ah, oh, I was enjoying the adieu. You know, maybe, have a, you know, you know, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, let me see. Do I want to tell you anything? Do I have anything I have to tell you especially? Let me think. Uh, so I have a question for you all. I have a question. Without further ado, no more ado. We can't have any more of it. Um, but I do have a question. Is there Critical Role or Candela Obscura tonight? This is what I want to know. This is my question that I have. Come to think of it, this stream, no Sierra, no one no. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Is it, you know, this stream is 90% ado. That is, that is perhaps correct. I feel like that is uh, accurate. Yeah. Hey, how was, how was all your Thanksgiving? By the way, I'm going to turn the game up like, uh, hello, Atomica. I'm turning up the game. We're going to turn it on like right now. Right now. We're just going to start it right now. But before I do start it right now, which I'm going to do, uh, they will stream their Red Nose Day special on Tuesday. Ah, and then the first episode of Tide of and Bone is next Thursday. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Besides, we used all the do making dinner today. Yeah, so I am starting the game right now. I do have to just, you know, chat with you a little bit first, but only like a little bit, because we're just really basically starting right now. But uh, I wanted to say, uh, I dealt with the last amount of family I deal with, and I swear my niece is going to need therapy as an adult, probably. 
yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about it. Um, I have a lot of cooking that I want to do today. I have not done all of it or much of it, but I have done some of it. And then what I did do is I made a cake, which is cooling. And I also made some coconut pecan frosting, which is also cooling. So I have got cake and frosting in the kitchen cooling. When I'm done with stream today, I would like to make one, uh, some salmon, right? Salmon and potatoes for dinner. I did eat already, but I did not eat dinner yet. So we'd like to make some salmon and potatoes for dinner, which we'll like, I can then have for multiple days in a row. And uh, I would also like to make this brand new recipe, which I think will be very good for me to make tonight if I can. Uh, it's all baking, but it is, um, I have this cookbook, which is for food on the go for like athletes, right? So if you're riding your bike for a long distance or you're running for a long distance, you need to get some food in your system that'll be good that's portable, et cetera, et cetera, as opposed to like having like energy drinks or gels, like having actual food. And there's this recipe for, they call them two bite pies. So like little, little mini, mini little hand pies, little pies. And uh, they have one for chicken and potato curry. And I thought that sounded really good. And I think I can just put them in like a, uh, a muffin tin, right? So like put the, make the dough, they've got like a fast dough you can make, make the dough, put in the muffin tin, put the chicken and potato and like uh, golden raisins and curry and all that stuff in there and then like bake it. And then I, I feel like if I do that, I would have like, I think that'd be really cool. And then I'd have these little, um, these little chicken curry, little things which I can take with me when I'm riding my bike. Or also uh, if I'm just like rushed, uh, I can do that. And I feel like that's, going to be pretty awesome. So I'm very excited about, so that's my goal for after stream today. My goal is to make the salmon and potatoes, uh, and I think I've got peas. And then also this is gonna be the ambitious part. The ambitious part is also, is then making a second round of food as well, which would be then these little hand pies, these savory hand pies. If I can do all of that, then I will have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for like the next week and a half, which, and like also nutrition from riding my bike and all of that, which I'm really excited about. I feel like, I feel really good about it. Um, uh, oh, Trooper, I have some fate news. I don't remember if I shared with you. You have not shared with me these, this fate news. I have lots of thoughts about things. I've been having conversations. I have things I want to talk to you all about. Game related things that I feel like you would be really interested in and you'd have really interesting things to say. Uh, and I'm excited about it. So just, just so you know it. Uh, Kron says, speaking of after the stream, when does after the stream start since no CR? 9.30? This way I get a good two and a half hours worth of stream in. I don't want to, I don't want to end at nine. That feels too, too abrupt. Not enough game time, but 9.30 will give us two and a half hours of game time. It's a two and a half hour stream, a little short, but good. And then I'll still have time to go and make uh, salmon and eat it. And also these uh, chicken and chicken and potato curry hand pies. So I feel like 9.30's our goal. That's our goal, which, I, which I'm excited about. Uh, Hawkeye says, you'll love this, Trooper. Dolly Parton did the halftime show of the Dallas Washington football game today. I didn't know that. Dressed as a Dallas Cowboy. What? Okay, I didn't know this and I missed it and I am sad because that's amazing. Oh my goodness. Mm. Was she, she was amazing, wasn't she? I'm sure she was. Also, isn't she like not 30 years old? You know, uh, she, like Diana Ross, Cher, a lot of those big divas got their start in the early 60s, mid 60s, mid 60s. Uh, so they're not young, but like, my gosh, what amazing careers they've had, right? Yeah, Atomica says, so I'm doing my first fate game in January after the holidays. Due to the community requests and discussions, I'm doing a Fallout game. And due to my first, due to that, my first fate game is going to be heavily modified to work as the special system. I remember when Robin Williams did that. Uh, that is very, that's very cool. That is very cool. Dolly is 77. 77. 77, y'all. Isn't that amazing? 
Isn't that amazing? Good for her. Yeah, good for her. I saw Cher in concert. She was also in her 70s and also really amazing. Just like really on it. Um, can, I, can I tell you all something? It's a, it's a musicology thing is what it is. And uh, it's a musicology thing that's sort of irritating. Uh, it's not really a musicology thing. It's really, it's really a music education thing. Uh, but I want to tell you because it's irritating. And I just want to share an irritating thing with you. Uh, because I thought that you might appreciate that. There are a lot of voice teachers who teach voice. Classical singing technique. So if you take lessons with them, you will be classically trained. And they have a lot of feelings about things um, that I think are really sketchy. It ties into one of the last conversations we had, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. Atomic says, I... I think it's giving the players way too many stress bars, but Fallout is supposed to be a power fantasy anyways. Oh, interesting. How many stress bars are you giving them? How many stress bars and what are they? How many stress bars are you giving them and what kind of stress bars are they? Hawkeye says, and she carried it off well, I imagine. She's saying, Jolene, nice, 95, classic. We are the champions, very nice. And we will rock you. Oh, nice. Now I can't stop imagining her and Freddie Mercury on the stage together. Oh, that would have been amazing. They would have been great together. Can you imagine? They would have been awesome together. Um, I was gonna tell you something. I was gonna tell you, yes, classical training. So while, since I'm gonna talk about classical singing for a moment, and uh, I do want to um, talk about werewolf, and I wanna talk about strategy and tactics, there are a bunch of things I wanna to talk to you about. So since those are all things that I wanna do, we're gonna just bring the game up so that it is here. And uh, yeah, it's not making any sound at the moment, so. Just move that there. Okay. Uh, I sp Fallout isn't a power. I've oh I've I played the way early Fallout, and then I have played uh, Fallout Three, but not New Vegas, which is my sorrow. Um, okay. So, classical training, I gotta say this. Okay, so special stands for strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. All stats between one and 10. Endurance will be physical boxes, perception will be mental, and it will be radiation stresses. Oh, I think that's fine, actually. That's, that's not too many stress bosses. Uh, having a... Uh, oh, okay. Having a three, stress bo three stress tracks is really not... Look, the thing is, having... You can you could even have more stress boxes because they don't carry over. Do you know what I mean? Like if you get something that injures your endurance uh, and you use up all your endurance stress boxes, that radiation stress box is not going to help you. You know what I mean? Because it's uh, it's not going to help you. Uh, so it is nine o'clock in the evening. Classical training. Do not let me forget. Okay, it is nine in the evening. Y'all, I have so many things I want to chat with you about. I'm so excited. Oh, I did want to go to sleep because I'm low in health and morale. Uh, and I don't think I wanted to do anything. We've got a lot of stuff in here. I think... I need a free place to stay. I feel like there's got to be a free place to stay in this game, right? Like, there's got to be. Oh, it's fine. I think we should actually uh, go back to the whirling rags. That's what I think we should do. And uh, I think while we are there... Oops, pardon me. While we are there, we should probably... Uh, what's the word? Um, Just an ordinary word. Ooh. Nothing to see here. We're gonna roll it. Because you see it, finally. This wall <gasps> is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colors. Ah! <coughs> Park bench is the pit house of hobos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, 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 wait, 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 what do we got here? 
Frost with the Chance of Doom. Yep. Pope Rose says, wish you all love leaving. Thank you, Pope. And back to you and your partner. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Atomic says, you can vats your way through a vault of bandits with nothing but a baseball bat and a smile if you build right. Mm. Mm. Chris, like, I don't play Bethesda. Fortunately, there's three whole fault games that precede them. The fun has been trying to figure out equipment, but I think I have a general system in place that should work. Um, there are different ways to handle equipment. There are different ways to handle equipment. Uh, I was talking to fake people again, by the way. Um, there are different ways to handle it. And I have, I recommend using armor and weapon ratings is what I recommend using. That's what I recommend. I remember, I recommend using armor and weapon ratings, uh, for equipment. Um, and I also recommend that they are just what they are, right? Nothing special about them. Uh, you'll have to get them, of course. If somebody wants like a big bonus or something, then it should be a stunt. If it's a stunt, you can have like your special weapon as a stunt, which will give you like a, you know, usually an attack, a bonus to attack or whatever it would be. Um, there is a rule that I have used before. I used it in Coloss. Uh, it didn't come up too much, but I did like it, which was that any weapon has like basically um, has a it has a boost attached to it. Well, not any weapon actually. Uh, only yeah, no, actually, any weapon has a, has has a, a it has a basically a it has a it has an aspect right. So it will have an ammo aspect and. It just sits there, not doing anything, but you can, if you like, invoke the ammo aspect for a plus two on your roll as normal, or if the weapon has automatic fire, you can invoke that ammo aspect to um, hit everybody in your zone, right? Everybody in the zone, your weapon's zone. So roll once, hit everybody in the zone, but if you do use the aspect to get that plus two, or to hit everybody in the zone if it's, if it's an automatic fire weapon, then your weapon is out of ammo. And you're not gonna be able to fire again with it until you spend an action to uh, create an advantage, which is to basically reload the reload the, the weapon. So you, so basically you can, that's a way to sort of get the idea of, of loading and reloading uh, your weaponry without it being too onerous. Like you don't have to track ammo. And if they never use their thing, then they never run out of ammo. But if they really need it or they really want it that moment, they can always invoke it, but then they have to spend a turn reloading. So that's a, a way to get a sense of that without being too detail-oriented. Although there are uh, other ways to do it as well, right? The, the other, like there, there are so many different ways to uh, deal with things in Fate, depending on what you want and how you want to do it. Um, your weapons could be the, is it the bronze rule or the silver rule? It's bronze rule or the silver rule? Bronze rule. Bronze rule, bronze rule, bronze rule. The bronze rule? Hold on, I don't want to give you the wrong one. I have to look it up now. This will distract me, and uh, I need to know. Is this the bronze rule or the silver rule? Hold on, give me a moment. I have to know. Uh, fate, bronze rule. I feel like it's the bronze rule. Yeah, it is. I was right. Uh, so... The bronze rule is that you can treat anything in fate like a character. Like that's what the bronze rule is. So um, anything can have skills, stunts, stress tracks, consequences. Anything can be treated as a character. Um, the world can be treated as a character. Uh, scenes can be treated as a character. Equipment can be treated as a character, if you like. Um, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, and so you, and when you treat it as a character, you don't have to have all the elements of the character. You can have some, but not others. So for example, if you wanted to, you could give weapons a stress, an ammo stress track that every time somebody uses it, uses the weapon, it ticks off one of the, one of the stress boxes. And then when you tick off all the stress boxes, your weapon is out of ammo and then you're going to have to reload. So there are different ways of, of, uh, doing it actually, it's, you know, and, and also if you wanted to, if you treated the weapon as a 
a character. You could give you could use stress boxes for ammo. You could give it aspects, right? Like you could give it an aspect both positive and negative. You could have an aspect like rare, rare ammo or um jams easily. Uh, or you could give it aspects like um sniper rifle or you know whatever right you know like really good sights whatever so you could if you wanted to you could uh if you were wanting to play a, a very sort of like a a game, very detail oriented game where damage to weapons like where weapons can be damaged you can give it a consequence boxes right you know like so you've got a you've got lots of options you could treat it as a character um, you can just use uh, weapon and armor ratings and not treat it as a character at all. You can use the little ammo rule. You can have them be stunts. Uh, you can, yeah, th like there's a, there are options for you. There are options for you. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm using weapon and armor ratings. Uh, a lot of them are actually in the negative due to file having a lot of less than new equipment. Uh, well, if they're in the negative, then why would people use them? Right. So that would be the question. Like if the because the weapon and armor rating gives you bonuses to your it adds to your role for defense or attack. So why would I use a weapon that if I use it, it makes it harder for me to hit than if I were just using my hands? Why would I use an armor that if I wear this armor, I will take more damage than if I weren't wearing the armor? So I don't see how negative uh, weapon rate or armor ratings would be helpful. You have to explain more. Uh, let's see. Uh, Heresy. Uh, I can't believe this. A law firm is advertising during the football pro football promoting a website called I Kid You Not SueSantaClaus.com if you've been naughty all year. Why? Why, Hawkeye? Why? Uh, and then anything else opening gets is due to its style. So a sniper rifle can hit three away and auto can hit everyone nearby and then an att uh, area attack should hit an area away completely. I see. I see. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be kind of be settled with the VAT system. Basically, fate points do everything they normally do except activate stunts, and VATs are just, are points just for stunts. Okay. And this is my first fate game. I'm probably not going to go too detailed over myself. That's also fair. Fair, fair, fair. Um, okay, so... Um, here's my list. Classical singing training, which I'm talking about right now. Tactics strategy. Werewolf. Those are the three things. Coloss. That I want to talk. Four things I want to talk about. Right. Uh, from what it looks like, the group is an ambulance chaser firm. Mm. The negs would mostly affect firearms, so your range, but can't hit the broads of a barn. And there's a chance your gun might just implode in your hand. Ooh. Key. Yeah, I just get a baseball bat and kill everybody with a baseball bat. Seems safer. You know what I mean? Like, I'd, I'd really ponder it. I'd have to ponder it. Uh, let's see. Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom into your thoughts, into thoughts in your brain. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yes. All the other wars on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. Classical singing. The uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft. Color peeled from the very face of God. Oh. More. Oh, wall father. Uh, Kim? I, I'm i thinking I'm going to become an art critic cop. So I think I need to say that I'll paint this wall. Huh? Yeah. He sounds tired of it all. Oh. Cindy the skull has all the necessary material. Talk to her. First, I know you're tired, Kim, but take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm -hmm. Sure. I must talk to Cindy. Get the necessary materials from her. You must. I must. We have a new quest, by the way, uh, in case. I wonder if we can talk to her now. I mean, if she, she is around, so we could talk to her now, theoretically. And, you know, if we did, uh... Oh, is it locked? Uh, one moment. 
Uh, let me grab my, uh... Nope. Uh, let me grab my, uh, tools. I've got a crowbar. Let me just grab that for a moment and see if that... If we can use... Yeah. Oh, hey, look! We got stuff. We got a, a signal blue naval coat. That seems cool. We got... I, I am excited about having things, just for the record, uh, because... Uh, I... I Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about my life right now. And we've got... Oh. We've got recycling. There's that woman. I don't want to talk to her right now. I don't want to talk to her, so just... For the record, I don't want to. But we're going to talk to Cindy. Uh, so classical training. Uh, yeah. Armor and melee would be less likely to be used in a in bad condition. Y yeah. Um, that's the sort of flavor of Fallout. A lot of people do use melee because guns are... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Used and unreliable. But if you have an actual good gun, it gives you that much more advantage. Absolutely. That makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Cindy Skull says, yeah! Well, we'll, we're going to chat with her and see what we can do. Uh, you know. Hey, look. Mazov right there. Nice. Uh, that's why scavenging is so profitable despite its danger. Just finding a mint condition 10 millimeter pistol could set up a scab for a few meals. I mean, hopefully even more than that. Oh, hey, everybody. We're going to talk to Cindy. I'm really excited about this. So, you classical... Gay officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Yes. Uh, right, but I need some paint and your brush, too. What for? For art. It's for art, okay? Well, if it's for art... But what kind Her eyes. of art are we talking about? Her eyes narrow to slits. Everything is sad and shit. We need art to make it okay. Just give me the brush. Sounds like you're just about to live out your self pity, not make a statement. <gasps> I can't have shit art on my conscience. To crush a man's dreams like that? I hope you're happy. There, there, piggy. I guess art just isn't really you. Because you suck in life and in everything. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I have to get better at conceptualization, apparently, um, if I want to have a chance of... I should have said the artiest of art. Oh, um, the original fall guns were new. The brother was still literally manufactured just to read farms and trade for basic necessities and other resources they needed. Oh, interesting. Um, so I'm going to just check to see if I have some conceptualization clothes, because maybe I do. I, I don't know. Let's see. Because uh, if I could get some more conceptual conceptualization, I would be. Suggestion. Half light. Hey. Okay. All right. Okay, I've got some conceptualization there. That's good. Uh, nothing else. So I probably just need more conceptualization. I'm gonna save. So classical training. Uh, this is also actually about gender. Can't do it. I need an 18, which means I need to roll 12. I need to roll an 11 or 12, which is really bad, and I can only uh, roll it once. So we're not gonna do that just yet. We are going to wait, is what we're gonna do. That's... Uh, I want to make this art. <sighs> oh. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. 
It towered over the harbor until it happened. For my guess about what happened, let's do that. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline, fired from the water, a straight shot into Revachol. Oh. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. Hmm. I'm gonna look at the ruins in the water. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Hmm. Only three stories stand where nine to 12 once did. Restoration has failed. What the shelling took out was never rebuilt. I'm gonna take in the ocean. The of the Martinez Inlet roll over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscure the better part of the remains. This is very poetic, everybody. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Mm. Who did this, this damage? A fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. Just to attack and us? They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Just to attack us? Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Hey, Kim, do you know who shelled our city? The coalition. But that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. Mm. He does not like talking politics of this kind. I see. Well, time to go. Finish that thought for now. But I will pick this thing up, because uh, we are in desperate need of money, so that's uh, what we're going to do. Uh, so, oh, uh, well, I just want to get to the Whirling Rags. which I believe our exit is gonna be over here. So, as I was saying, classical mu classical singing training. There's a thing about classical singing training which can be very irritating. Also need to check chat, just uh, for the record. Um, because there are attitudes uh, and assumptions about what how people should sing and what constitutes good singing. And uh, these things are super sketch. They're super sketch is what I'm trying to tell you. They're sketchy and I don't approve of them. And by the way, this is related to the conversation about Dolly Parton and Cher, just so you know. I, I'm bringing this up because it is related. Uh, I, It's not just random, I swear. Uh, let's see. Uh, Atomica notes that this game is taking place in 2300, a couple of decades after Fallout 4, and the Brotherhood is non-existent in the area at the start of the game. Oh, that's right. Uh, there was a lot of uh, shifts and changes that happened, if I remember correctly, uh, between, like, as the, the timeline progressed, yeah? Wait, did you just say classical Soul Train? No, I didn't. Maybe I should have. Uh, so... There's stuff going on here, right? People we can chat with, things we can do, but there are also people here that I don't know if we've spoken to before, but I do think we have some sort of thing to do here. So, anyhow, about classical training. I need to do this. I need a brush. It's fine. Uh, uh, I did, oh, I've got to interview this Sunday friend. Dang it, so sorry. All this time, I forgot that we actually have an important mission to do. We've got to go back in that building and interview the Sunday friend. I am so sorry. This is a thing we have to do because he won't be here later. Sorry, important, important quest. If we don't do it now, we will never ever get this done and we will lose everything forever. 
Sorry about that. I'm glad that I remembered right about now. I'm glad I checked. <clears throat> Ooh. Oops. Okay. Uh, going back in to interview the Sunday friend. Sorry. Hey, Rebel and Five Brides, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, ha happy Thanksgiving. Uh, let's see. Do <laughs> Don Cornelius has a whole new bag. Uh, all right, so we have to find this Sunday friend. And, uh, exactly where the Sunday friend is, is, I think, out here. All right, so. Oh, wrong place. Wrong. Wrong. Oh. Exciting. Wrong, wrong spot. We got to head around. So in classical singing training, there's this thing. A lot of people who are classical, classical voice teachers have some thoughts about singing. And one of the thoughts they have about singing is that their, the classical singing technique is not only is it better, but that it's healthy, that it's the only healthy way to sing. And if you do not sing according to their techniques, you will not be healthy, right? It will not be a healthy way to sing. You will damage your voice. Uh, you're okay, break at work. Oh, nice, hospital's packed. Ooh. Ooh, uh, on Thanksgiving? Ah, yeah. Um, Ayo, hey, Nergobert, how are you? Ooh, governmental issues take me all over restaurant. Rebel soul, excuse me. Oh, hey, we got a person. This is very exciting. Um, so, hold on a second. I'm gonna finish this thought. So, one of the things about classical voice training, remember, they're gonna say that it is natural, healthy, and other ways of singing, especially non-classical ways of singing are unhealthy for your voice. One thing you have to know is that classical music training artificially broadens the, the, the divide between men and women. If you are understood to be a woman and you take classical music training, they're going to encourage you, all the training you're going to get is gonna be basically singing in your head voice. Um, Ooh, all up here in this place up here, you're gonna be singing in your head voice. Lo, 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 lo. Ooh, all up here. And if you are perceived as being a man, you're gonna be encouraged to sing all your trainings to be about singing in your chest voice, which is singing here. So men are almost never encouraged to sing in their head voice. And women are almost never encouraged to sing in their chest voice, right? So there's this uh, gap of where you're placing your voice. If it's resonating from here or here. And in classical training, they almost exclusively train women to sing in their head voice and men to sing in their chest voice. Uh, sometimes they'll get a mix, right? So you can like, they're gonna train you to get a bit of a mix, but they're gonna want you to basically stay in these very different voice spaces. Uh, and they will often say that it is unhealthy for women to sing in their chest voice. I've read more than one article all about it. And they will say things like belting, which is a kind of, which is the style you're gonna get in Broadway, but also rock, pop, country, a lot of uh, popular and folk musics involve women belting, uh, singing from their chest voice. And they will say that if you sing in that way, you'll ruin your voice and you will not have any longevity. You won't be able to sing that way for long because it's bad for you. It's unhealthy for you to sing that way and it will ruin your voice. Even though men sing that way all the time and it's not a big deal. Anyhow, my point is Dolly Parton is still singing and Barbara Streisand is still singing and Cher is still singing and Diana Ross is still singing. And there are women who are part of Bulgarian women's choirs and they sing into their 80s too. So it's just not true, this idea that if you sing in this in this way that is more associated with, uh, not with classical music styles, then uh, you will not be healthy. And that's just not true. And I just wanna tell you that I find that irritating that they say those things. And I find that irritating that the way they teach people to sing in ways that are like sketchy. That's what I wanted to tell you. Um, Heading to bed, good night, Atomica. Go to sleep. Uh, la 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 la, says Roller. Uh, why, just for the higher pitch resonance? They must really hate bands like the Tiger Lilies. All he does is sing a falsetto. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, the arch enemy singer is still singing. Um, it's it's because of their ideology, Hawkeye. It's it's part of like you you normalize the idea that women sing super high and men sing super low, and so you just train them so that's what happens. Uh, but that's not accurate, right? Uh, they also yes, they all they do also hate the BGs. Yes, they do. Also like uh, Smokey Robinson. And the thing is, and I'm going to just say, I'm going to say a thing. It's a little pet peeve of mine. It's a pet peeve of mine. So I described it as the head voice and the chest voice. And I'm going to note that when men sing in their head voice, they often call it falsetto rather than their head voice. And I think that's messed up, right? Because it implies that this is a, calling it the falsetto is that this is a false voice for men to sing in. That men should not be singing in that voice. It's a false voice. It's, it's, it's just their head voice. Everybody... Lottie Dottie, everybody can sing resonating through your head or resonating through your chest or somewhere in between. That's something that all bodies can do. Everyone can do it. There's nothing false about singing in your head voice if you're a man. There's nothing unhealthy about singing in your chest voice if you're a woman. We have, all of us have the entire, like, uh, range of our body to resonate out of. It's totally fine. So it's just, it's just a bit of a, a bit of a pet peeve of mine that they do that because uh, it cuts people off from the full range of their voice. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, they must, uh, yeah, that's silly. Like, men don't have heads. They, Krellen, I've seen them. I've, like, just big heads. Not, they're not, they're not big heads, but they're heads. Uh, to me, falsetto was always taught because it's just a type of octave shift. Yeah, but it's just your head voice, right? You, it could, and when women do that, when women do that, they just call it singing their head voice. That's it, right? You know what I mean? Like, that's, and that's the thing. When women sing their head voice, they don't call it a falsetto. You never hear somebody say, oh, that Julie Andrews, she sings in her falsetto very well. They never call it a falsetto if you're a woman. They just call it your head voice. But if you're a man, then they call it a falsetto. And I just think that's sketchy. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't like it. Because it... I don't like it. And I just wanted to share that with you because that was topic one that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it's just, it's, and the thing is, yeah, it's just, it's just singing in your head voice. All right, what do we have here? I'm gonna look at all the stuff before I talk to the guy. Oh, it's a hat. Oh, a summer and conical hat. Oh, interesting. Uh, for ladies, do we need to call their true set of voice? <laughs> Okay, Hawkeye, that's really good. That's really good. Nergobot says, I mean, the classical space has always been somewhat infested with elitists, yep, but there still are those that are reasonable and open to other styles of singing. Absolutely, um, absolutely. The problem is that they are not trained in those other styles of singing, A, and even worse, very often their teachers, a quarterly biggest business magazine. And this I find very frustrating. Their teachers will often discourage them from singing in other styles. An old photo of the same apartment dated 01. Oh, interesting. And I find that very frustrating. Like, I have students of mine who are singers, are taking voice lessons, and they would like to sing in multiple styles, right? They want to sing, they want to sing opera, but they want to sing jazz, they want to sing in multiple styles. And their voice lessons teachers are like, oh no, you really shouldn't sing in other styles, those other styles are not healthy for you. So if they want, and so they, if they don't, if they're very influenceable by their teachers, then they just don't learn other styles. Um, if they have a bit more, if they're a bit more open to things, what they'll end up having to do is take lessons from a different teacher. So uh, they'll take lessons from a classical teacher, but also a jazz teacher or a different kind of teacher. And the jazz teacher also has been classically trained, uh, usually. So it's just a way in which sometimes they just tell them uh, not to, and it's the same thing, like if you wanna go and learn like other techniques for violin, different techniques, and when I say different techniques, I don't just mean fiddling or jazz tech, uh, violin. I also mean like 20th century, 21st century avant-garde violin techniques. Gosh, you know what, if you wanted to do, by the way, this is not just, um, non-classical stuff. If you wanted to learn early music singing, so like medieval Renaissance singing, or if you wanted to technique, or if you wanted to learn 21st century avant-garde vocal technique, which is still falls within the realm of classical music, most of your classical music 
voice le teachers will not teach you those styles at all. You'd have to go to somebody who specializes in those things uh, because people who sort of dedicate themselves to classical music, singing technique, pedagogy, often only learn that and not other things, whereas other people all will learn classical technique, but other things as well. So there's like a, there's an elitism and it's not everybody, right? It's not everyone, but there's a persistent um, trend and they will often write articles in singing pedagogy journals saying, hey, don't teach people other ways of doing things. Don't let them sing other ways. It'll ruin their voices forever. Uh, and they often then teach people the people who end up really buying what they're selling into becoming the next generation of voice teachers. So it's a, it, it can be a problem, right? It can be a problem. Yeah. Uh, what is the trend set of voice? Uh, if you treat your throat and lungs correctly and safely, you can sing multiple styles. Yes. Always wanted to learn magical style. Oh, it's beautiful. Magical style is beautiful, beautiful. It's just that uh, to really get it, like you have to tend to go to a specialized uh, singing teacher, sadly. Um, no, really. Yeah, it's quite difficult to get a good spread. Everything is highly specialized these days. It's so true. It really is. And the thing is, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, you know? Um, and I'm really lucky that our main opera voice teacher at my university is really open to different styles. She's And she has studied other styles of singing as well. She may not sing them herself personally, but she knows how to do that. And she, also, by the way, she has also studied microphone technique. So I feel really good recommending my students take lessons with her because she knows how to do microphone technique for different venues. She knows how to sing in different styles or how to coach people to do so. Um, she's really good. She's really good. And she's not an elitist. She's really wonderful. A very great, great person. Love her. And But I will also note this about her. She also... In addition to that, she also will commission brand new opera works, right? So she is not afraid. Uh, she is uh, excited about when she, when she, because she does operas, right? She Part of what she does is she runs the uh, opera ensemble. And when she decides what opera to do for any given year, buckets of paint on a layer, layer of old newspapers. Interesting. Uh, when she decides what kind of opera to do, she will do 21st century operas. She'll do new operas. She'll get Brett. She'll commission composers to make new operas for the ensemble. An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Hmm. And she will also do old operas, like really old operas. So like Renaissance operas. And um, so she's much more open-minded uh, than, and she will also do like, she's also done like cabarets as well. Uh, she's done like, she did like three penny opera. Uh, she's done a lot of really, I would not be surprised that I would imagine that she'd also be the kind of person that would do operetta. I bet she'd do Gilbert and Sullivan an empty ashtray. Interesting. Uh, flyers for underground parties. Dishes soaked up in a pot. Hmm. So she's like very open. And part of that openness means that she will do classical music that other people often just don't even do themselves, right? That they, um, uh, yeah. So I am, uh, I'm really lucky that, that she's my colleague. Logic, super logical, but minus one suggestion, plus one drama, minus plus one electrochemistry. Become an addict in a strange bathing robe. Okay, uh, I'm gonna talk to this person, but what do I want to, what do I want to wear? Uh, I should probably pick clothing that will make it better for me to be to to be successful in talking to this person. Uh, but what am I gonna pick? Uh, let's let's think about it. Yeah, uh, logic, complete rhetoric, drama, play the actor, lie and detect lies. Hmm. Let's see. Cool for undercover cops, thespians of the stage, psychopaths. Okay. Uh, all right. Conceptualization is creative, psychedelic, fanciers, critics, visual calculus. Okay. Suggestion. Cool for diplomats, charmers, and sociopaths. Okay. So I think I need suggestion because that lets me chat with people. Um, uh...
okay. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna up my suggestion. Maybe drama. I mean, I could have more authority, but uh, I don't know about that. Empathy, maybe? Okay, so let's see what I can do to increase my empathy suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Surprise haters. Uh, half ledger fight or flight response. Okay, so let's try. Let's try to get. Um, let's try to increase our suggestion, empathy. Let's do that. Suggestion and empathy. Uh, maybe drama. I don't know. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, we've got shoes, which is composure. Savoir faire. Hold on. What does savoir faire do for us? Savoir faire is low, and it does what? Stun them with panache. Keep pressing the wrong button. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, urges you to be better than you are. Urges you to be disco. I want to be disco. Slip by others in smart unboxing style, then tumble out the back with unexpected acrobatics. It enables you to move with silent footsteps, to groove to a good beat, to lift useful evidence off perps without them noticing. Makes you also a cooler cop, whose athletic flair will certainly impress the citizenry. Makes you the king of cool, which is as much as, say, the most stylish douchebag in Revachal. Nobody will see you until you're ready to be seen, and then you'll get the full treatment, whether they want it or not. At low levels, however, you'll be a bumbling, feckless cop unable to catch a pair of keys thrown by your partner without losing an eye. Okay, so let's let's put on some clothes, shall we? Um, we've got these shoes, which is good for composure, not great for savoir faire. Gloves, good for interfacing. In an empire, visual calculus, encyclopedia, conceptualization, minus one suggestion. That's not great. Composure. So let's let's get something better. Uh, let's get. All that is bad for my savoir faire. So, uh, we have a mm, logic and authority drama. Could do some of that. Uh, could do that. Esprit de corps, shivers, half light, suggestion. I don't have a lot of things that are going to make me really great. Uh, wait. That's going to give, give us suggestion, which I think is good, right? Okay, so that suggestion, that's good. We, we, we're going to maximize our, our possibilities. Uh, these We're going to switch off our shoes. We're going to put on a dramatic shirt, uh, this mesh tank top, which gives some drama. Uh, what do we have that's going to ruin our suggestion? Composure, drama, suggestion... Encyclopedia. These glasses are not good for drama. Let's take them off. Uh, okay, uh, these give us some logic. And, uh, you know, I feel like that's good. Right? Let's, let's do that. Uh, in terms of hats, that's what we got. We're going to dress like this, and we're going to go and chat with him in this outfit. Is this a good idea? I don't know. I can't tell you. I, I really can't say, but... Uh, oh, a politician. Ooh. Ooh. All right. The man in business casual moves his cufflinks. I'm going to check chat. Uh, have you ever listened to Dimash... Uh, Kudai Bergen? I haven't. Would you put a, a link to something of them in our media musings in the Discord? Because I would love to listen to it. I love listening to new stuff. Savoir faire is everywhere. More pizzazz. The cavalry has arrived. Um, yes. Now, I had also wanted to talk about Tactics, Strategy, Werewolf, and Coloss. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Nergobert. I love... I, yeah. Basically, back to that moment... The thing about like the classical sort of sphere is it is very narrow. It's mostly music from 1780 to like 1914. And there's so much more music 
and also not even from all of Europe, let alone all of the world. Most classical music stuff is primarily French, German, Italian, with a little bit of Russian later, a little bit of English, not much, uh, very little Spain, a little bit of like the Netherlands. Uh, again, actually for the classical era, it's mostly just Italy, France, Germany, and a little bit of Russia, uh, and a couple, like a couple of like tokens uh, who can fit into that style. It's, it's just, there's so much more, you know, that's all. And a bunch of people get lost and not paid attention to it. That's just a bummer. Um, his hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. Hmm. My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the Coalition Government. Oh. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Tour. Interesting. I see. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hmm. All right, I will. I will ask you about the hanging. No, first ask an innocuous personal question to get oh. the interview off on the right foot. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Absolutely. Sure suggestion, let's do that. Uh, before I go, canopy, before we go to that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from, the hat. Uh, okay, let's go with the uh, silk robe, because I like a good silk robe. Before we get to that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe oh, from. Oh, we got it from an atelier in the East Delta Commerce Center. We. Oui. Well, hey, Roller. I think it's a little culturally insensitive, but the material is great. Sadly, the shop is now out of business. Good for you. That's really all I can tell you about it. Hmm. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Um. Uh, what's an official like you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Mm. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. Interesting. The economy impacts the entire international community which is why it requires international oversight. Hmm. Okay. That, what are you doing here in this apartment seems a little bit direct. Uh, I'll ask it. Uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. Yeah. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. Hmm. Hmm. I see. So, what is the price stability? It is the most important thing. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment, which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Hmm. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Right. Precisely. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to print. Hmm. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Mm. 2% of what, though? Not too far below. No. At uh, two below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. Yeah, but you're not answering my questions at all. The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? No, I'm good. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'etre. Of the moral hey, Gritty. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. Huh. Uh, Trooper, why was I watching Silent Hill when the last time I watched it, I have extremely vivid nightmares? I don't know, but maybe it's because you're anticipating a secret project that I have that involves Silent Hill-ish. Maybe that's why? Is that why? But, oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. You can always call our information rack. 
Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. Wait, 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 wait. I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want to know more. What is this? It's the International Organization for Moralists, hence the Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. I see. Also, hello, you have a really nice face. Thank you, Grinny Weasley. Uh, you actually expect a politician to actually answer you? I know, I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, so what I'm hearing is that we're moral intern bitches? Anyone's job doesn't automatically make one anyone's bitch. It's huh. like there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Hmm. So are you a moralist? What a thought. Mm hmm but why? Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. But what is a normal, stable world, though? The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé. Marnais doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. What about the rest of Revachal? Is it part of the normal world? Rivachol is generally difficult. Mm. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. Mm. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. He gives you an approving nod. I really need to ask Kim. I thought I would be able to ask him after, but then I can't ask him. So, uh... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go and say something uh, probably outrageous right now. I don't think I'm moralist. Moralism sounds boring. Nope. Moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. That's probably what I'm going to say. Democracy is meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. That sounds good, too, because I'm going for a communist run. It's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D, none of the above. Is that moralism? I'm going to say democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. <clears throat> of course, the detective's personal views do not represent the views of the RCM. Hmm. Ah, my friend. But the lesson of the revolution is that communism... Uh-oh. Work. Okay. Uh... Yeah, it didn't work because the coalition crushed it violently. Oh, yes. The big bad coalition mm -hmm. crushed the revolution. Mm -hmm. Tell me, if the revolution was... So oh. Bad, oh. Would it have been crushed so easily? Hold on now. Are we really so bad for wanting compromise, peace, and prosperity? On reasonable, achievable terms? Ask yourself. Now, mm. enough of this delightful political mm. interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, I mean, it wasn't why, but kind of be intrigued. What is the secret project you're talking about? I can't tell you. It's a secret. Uh, I just want to let you know that my cop character and this fellow are not very excited about each other. He seems very affable, though. Uh, yeah, so what is this, like, international community? La communauté internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the oh. coalitions that stopped the disaster of the revolution. Yeah, he's just trying to go and, like, poke at me. So we're going to... So I'm going to be a... Yeah, so you're just some kind of bureaucrat, right? Yes. As I said before, I'm a commissioner from sur la clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about Sur la Clé. What's there to say? Sur la Clé is a modern, urbanized country that <coughs> measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIF. What is that? Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachol is only one of its many armies whose progress it supports and cherishes. I don't think I like this guy. Uh, but Trooper, says Grinny. I'm Grinny Mike. You have to tell me your secrets. It's law or something. Mm. Yeah, think about it. Darling, that can't be an official designation. Yeah, so what makes Revachol Sur la Clé's darling? Of course, a great percentage of Revachol's culture hails from Sur la Clé. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Uh-huh. I see. Uh, and tell me about Orange. Orange is an exemplary Orange. nation who, as a core member of EPIF, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Next to oh. Sur la Clé, Orange is probably the most prominent member of the international community. Yeah, okay. 
Right, sure. But outside of EPIS, what is Oranje? Oranje's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy industry to advanced services and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. Grinny says, you're what's wrong with the world, but not really. I just hate secrets. It's a it's a project that I want to work on. I just need a little bit of extra free time so I can work on it. And I think it'll be something that will not take me too long to work on. Uh, like I've got some bigger projects like Coloss, like the Coloss book. But uh, this is a smaller project that I want to work on, but it's just, you know. But that didn't tell you anything about Aranya. Yeah, can you just, like, talk like a normal person? About what? About Aranya. Just tell me what it's like there. Oh, it's very urban and very well ordered. <coughs> their streets are clean, their horse cars run on time, the people are polite and efficient. Like I said, they are an example for less emerged nations. I just... Yeah, you know what? Let, let's let's talk about something else. You wish. Yeah, okay. So, you actually witnessed the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Oh. Oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, you went. I'll leave you alone for now. No, no, no. You'll find out. Um, so, one of the things I want you all to talk about in chat is we were having this whole conversation over in my Discord about... Uh, Krellen brought it up about Werewolf. Well, about uh, advancement, uh, XP, experience points advancement in the new World of Darkness games. And the World of Darkness book recommends one to two points of experience per session. One, two if it's sort of special, which is very slow advancement. And it is very expensive to increase your humanity. It's 10 times where you want to go. So like if you have a humanity five and you'd like to get humanity six, that's 60 XP which is over a year's worth of playing if you play every week Bef and not spending any of that XP on anything else, uh, but saving up for it in order to go and raise your humanity from five to six. Um, if your humanity is pretty low, it's cheaper, but they also then say you should probably be spending a year of in-game time not dealing with vampires, out like turned away from vampire society, which, by the way, your fellow players are all vampires, and like doing selfless things for no personal gain, removed, basically removed from the game for a year before you could then even maybe, maybe increase your humanity one. So it, even though the book says you should not just revel in being a monster, you should try to increase your humanity because that's what it's all about, they also make it very, very impossible rules as written to increase your humanity. Um, GMs can just sort of give it to you anyway, but I mean, by the book, that's a bit of a contradiction, and it's just, wow, it's 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 harsh. And Krellen was looking into Werewolf and was noting that Werewolf recommends two to four XP per session, and as does Hunter, and Hunter even has a spot for, like, high cinematics for six to eight XP per session, which is, like, a massively huge gap. Now, V5 did come out first, but, like, the difference is... is uh, is big. It's a big difference. And I'm like, what is that about? Hey, Colonel RPG, how are you? I'm doing very well. Colonel says, it feels to me like the V5 book needs a heavy revision, particularly in the experience field. Yeah, uh, I feel like I feel like there are a bunch of things they could do to revise the core book to make it better. There are a couple of things Name that I game. would do if I were, were going to revise it. Uh, and But one of the things I would do absolutely would be to sing... The name game. Come on, everybody. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name. Mm -mm -mm. I treated like it wasn't there. Mm -mm -mm. And then a B or an F mm -mm -mm. or an M will appear. And then I say boo at a B, then I say the name, then banana fan or info. Then I say the name again with an F, very plain, then a fee, fire and a mo. Then I say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can't rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. The fish is calm. The fish is calm, the fish is calm, but the fish is calm, banana fan info, the fish is calm, fee, fire, mama, fish is calm. The fish is calm. Mm, 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 mm. The name game. 
Thank you for gifting that sub to the Fiercest Com Colonel RPG. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Grinny says, that's a wee bit ridiculous if you ask me. I'd 100% reveal, revel in my inhumanity. It's gonna take a year for me to get anywhere worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want us to try to, I just feel like the game says they want you to try to regain humanity, but then they make it very difficult to do so. So then why would you? And they also, yeah, I, that's just what I'm saying. And they, yeah, that's it. Carla says, no, I'm currently running around feeding cats, so I might have to ask where we're talking about a few times. Absolutely. The fiercest hog. Um, yeah, so I think, I'm so sad I did not get a chance to ask him if he's a moralist. I'm so sad about that. Uh, I'll say, start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. Go on. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers like a drama teacher set in the scene. Hey, having some drama's pretty good. What do you mean, like in a play? Mm -hmm. It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. Go on. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. Mm -hmm. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows being dealt one by one. Oh, that's interesting. Artie, how are you? Things are going well. I hope you're having a lovely Thanksgiving. So I feel like um, I'm gonna agree with Krull and I think that I think that V5's core book needs a revision. I think it needs a, a revised edition. And there are some things that I feel like would be really good for them to do uh, that would involve re... They carried some stuff over from earlier editions that clashes with some of the new concepts they have. Like they had some of these new concepts for how does how the game is supposed to go. And I think that the new concepts are quite good, but they have some things that are holdovers from old editions that sort of undermine the new concepts that they have. And I think they should really uh, ditch some of the old stuff and really embrace some of the new stuff that they were doing to really sort of create something that's very interesting and new. Really just like go for it. Um, and really think about how the mechanics they've built play into the narratives they want to play because sometimes there's a clash. There's some ludo-narrative dissonance is what I'm gonna say. Carl says, actually, Shipper, there is no cost raising humanity. The time tends to cost blood potency. Humanity can't be raised by experience as far as I can see. I think it mentioned that they recommended charging for it. I think there was a mention about uh, charging for it, I think, because blood potency would be super cheap to raise. Um, yeah, because I remember, I remember reading in there somewhere about uh, it costing 10 times, somewhere in there. It's also, sadly, Krella, not the well, the most well-organized book. Not all the things that are related to the same thing are in the same spot in the book, and that can make it really hard to find things, but uh, I'll have to go look for it, yeah. It's uh, not, it's somewhere in there. I remember seeing it, and again, it's not uh, well-organized that way. I will say sadly, but uh, Krellen, how do you, uh, yeah, the index is also just flat out incorrect in places. Yeah, I just feel like it could use a revision is what I would say. Uh, and they did do a couple of revisions in uh, the companion when they messed some stuff up. But uh, I, yeah, I feel like they need a, I feel like they need a revised edition. Um, and I would really like them to follow through with some of the ideas they came up with that I thought were really interesting. Uh, I really think the idea that you lose, you can lose humanity. First of all, I think that humanity should be called something different. I know that's a sacred cow, but I think they should rename it to something else uh, because there's part of the new structure implies that humanity is not about morality, not like in the, like some kind of objective morality, but about violating the chronicle tenets that the players themselves decide on. Right, so if you, like, if they follow through with this idea, the Chronicle Tenants tells you what the Chronicle says is, you know, trouble. And then your convictions are the things that keep you, sort of, like, support you. And in some ways, the Chronicle Tenants point towards vampirism and convictions point towards humans, but that doesn't, that's not always about good or evil. Because you could create Chronicle Tenants that are uh, Sabbat style chronicle tenants. You should be like you should be able to make a Sabbat game using the system that they've created, 
Like you don't, you wouldn't necessarily, you won't, you won't need, if you, if they followed through, you wouldn't need different paths. You wouldn't need like a path of humanity, a path of this or a path of that. All that would be encompassed really by the chronical tenants and what your convictions are to mitigate those things. So you should be able to create a Sabbat game or really different types of games in terms of what matters and doesn't matter based on that. And that's what makes you lose humanity, generally speaking. It's just that they then do things like, if you ghoul someone, you you take stains. So they sort of put in some automatic stain getting stuff that might conflict with what your chronicle tenants are. So I would like them to maybe drop that stuff. They they carried over the description of what you're like at various levels of humanity based on the earlier editions where like, oh, if you're low humanity, you're a sadist who's evil. And I was like, I feel like we can't do that. I feel like you should rewrite that to describe this as being a person who's much more oriented towards uh, vampire society and cares less about humans or vice versa. Not because you could be very, very human and a serial killer. Do you know what I mean? And if you're a, you could be, you could be a human and be a serial killer and you're not very nice. So I think... I think that they could do, I think, I just would like them to follow through with the original concept and like really revise that through so that you can actually create really different kinds of campaigns, really customize what those campaigns are like and have that mean something uh, without uh, sort of with some consistency. That's what I would like. I think that would be really great. Uh, uh, wait, wait, I was trying to delete that. Ignore it. Okay, I ignored it. Found the section you were talking about though. Uh, there's an, as an angry Maple Leaf, uh, a Maple Leaf, Artie, I love it. Uh, Granny says, yeah, y'all make me want to read my Emerald, Emerald Templar's rulebook now. It's almost my bedtime. Oh, nice. Uh, increasing humanity should be a, a major personal story arc involving at least the gaining of new touchstones and the deliberate turning away from kindred society and power. And also, some extraordinarily inhumane in-game actions might allow a player to buy humanity with experience points at a cost of 10 times the new humanity rating. Yeah. Some of, my, some of your favorite serial killers are human. Mm -hmm. So it's turning away from vampire society in a major way or a bunch of experience after doing something big and nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. I just don't, uh, yeah. It is a Felicia Day emote from one of her mods was named Tyrannical. I should not be seen. Name game. Oh, uh, thank you for that. Thank you for parsing the subtleties of those two things, Grelin. Uh, but both ways, it's just really harsh. Do you know what I mean? It's really, really harsh. Uh, but that said, the name game. Come on, everybody. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I said, now let's play a game. I bet you I can make a rhyme out of anybody's name. The first letter of the name. Mm -mm -mm. I treated like it wasn't there. Mm -mm -mm. And then a B on F. Mm -mm. Mm, on M will appear. And then I say boo at a B, then I say the name, then banana fanner and foe. Then I say the name again with an F very plain, then a fee, fire and a mo. Then I say the name again with an M this time, and there isn't any name that I can rhyme. Mm, 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 mm. Critch twitch, critch twitch, critch twitch, bo bitch twitch, banana fanner, foe, fitch twitch, fee, fire, mo mitch twitch. Crit Twitch, mm, 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 mm. the name game. Mm. Yeah, chasing cats. Yeah, uh, but there's a big caveat on the buying with experience part that basically says, says this isn't a core rule. This is a suggested option. Storytellers should feel free not to allow players to throw XP humanity. Yeah, so it's just very, very punishing. I find. And I just don't think that's gonna give them what they want. Do you know what I mean? Thank you for that resub, Crit Twitch. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. Uh, how many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? Mm -hmm. The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Mm. Were any of them huge, like 200 kilograms huge? That's a giant you're describing. No. They were all quite human, as far as I could tell. Hmm. Uh, what happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. Were they men? Women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. 
I'm not going to ask about the ethnicity because I don't think he could see that. I'll ask. What ethnicity were they? I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Iropajites among them. Hmm. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask. Hmm. All right. What happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, Professor. Nothing else happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean nothing happened? They lynched a guy. And eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots. No celebratory shouts. No anything. You're right, that does seem strange. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? Um, Grinny, I did not say a bad word in my name game. That is why when I sing the name game for Crit Twitch, I'm very careful to say Crit Twitch with a little gap between those the two T's. So it is Bit Twitch and Fit twitch and mit twitch. I very careful not to run those two T's together so it doesn't sound like I said a bad name. Bit twitch. All uh, I can say is that it was late. You didn't check your watch? My watch. Yes, now I remember. It was 30 minutes past midnight. Give up. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. Those are all my questions. Thanks for your time. Anything I can do to assist you, Axel? Yeah, uh, can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedera, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Um, what's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. Okay, um... Oh, but that doesn't tell me anything about Kedra itself. Is it warm there? Cold? Something in between? Warm. It's also known for its mandarin trees and dust storms from the Supra Moon. Hmm. This person never tells me what Kedra I want to know. Emerging market, but it still has a long way to go. Maybe that's why my friends Minaj decided to emigrate. Hmm. How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the Isulin Peninsula? Oil platforms ablaze in the night, civil wars lasting for years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. This guy is not telling me anything. Uh, you're describing how the coalition occupied Revachal. One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion. And not just allowed, encouraged even. Have you ever tried debate? What do you mean? Debating. You should consider joining a debating society for adults. I hear there are oodles of fun. I used to have a flyer for one, but but now that I start thinking of it, it was for an improv class anyway. It's this funny theater thing, you know? Very creative. <laughs> Helps relieve stress. A chill runs down your spine as you envision a half dozen people in professional attire standing around a chair, awkwardly pretending to be waiting for a muggle bus. It's neither funny nor creative. Gritty! Be right back. All right, so, but you still have not told me what you, who he is. Sorry, who? Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. <sighs> education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is yeah. the cornerstone of our civilization. Okay, yeah, but fine, but what's his real name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, all right? Please don't put me in this situation. Okay, so all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented researcher. This guy, he, he, run around. What are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. Ray, what view? It's dark outside. Listen, 
What? I'm not hearing anything. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. Because they're poor? Because you bombed this place? But a million real views stay. You can't take that away. He knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. Where's my fake cigarette? I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. Here it is. I'm playing my cop guy. I need my fake cigarette. Okay. A busy bee. What an odd choice of words. Well, I had something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. Thanks, that's, that's all I need. A moment, officer. Yes? Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Hold on. Why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Oh. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Yeah, thanks for the heads up, but my work here is done. Of course. I'm glad I could help. This guy rubs me the wrong way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Kim for a moment. Yeah? Mm, no, we're good. Leaving. I've checked everything here. Okay, we're going. Anyhow, I did want to know what those who have read Werewolf and Hunter think about the differences between vamp, like the ways in which, because those two came afterwards, right? The, the ways in which those two uh, systems have evolved and changed and made different. So I would find that interesting. Uh, so the big version I do is, at the very least, bump Vampire to the standard two to four of the other games. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Here we go. Oop, yeah. wrong button, pardon me. Uh, we're gonna head out. Now I think we can go the whirling and rags. This is like whirling and rags moment. Uh, but I do need, how am I doing? Am I thinking about anything right now? I am. Okay, I'm thinking about some of my, my, my derealization. That's great. I've got 80 experience points, which means I can get something new coming up. Oh, so here's the thing. This guy's over here, and we're supposed to do a thing. We're going to save. Let's see. I don't know if I should do this with him here. Well... This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. We're gonna press our ear against the door. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. Hmm. You don't hear any movement. Hmm. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Uh, I'm gonna carefully knock. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. Should I be doing this with, with Kim here? I guess no one is in. He looks uncomfortable. Lieutenant, what is your opinion of this task we're take undertaking? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about your friend. The lieutenant replies, still inspecting the padded door. Apparently. Working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? I that the local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. Yeah. But if this gets us to the bottom of this hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. Okay. On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evra we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Lie to Everard? That's also an option? Yes. 
Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You two this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open it and be done with this. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. I don't want to lie to Everard, considering he's trying to blackmail me later. Crown says, also for what's worth, I did some mathing and determined that the new stat skill arrays for new characters in the WAD 5 universe makes characters closer to the mortal standard in the older editions, which was a step of power lower than the base supernatural. Oh, that's interesting. Including including vampires? Including vampires? Oh, yeah, because we used to do a... They used to, we used to have the array, right? Remember we used to do it the um, primary, secondary, tertiary? Right? Do you remember back in the day? Primary, like, and you get a certain number of points for your prime. It's like, was it like seven, five, three? Seven, like, you could put seven points in your primary set of uh, attributes, five in your secondary, then three in your tertiary, and you'd pick physical, mental, social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Seven, five, three, uh, 13, nine, five. And everyone used the same starting sets as Vamps. That's very interesting. I'm going to unlock the door. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of retinin of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of Quicksilver. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. Okay, everybody. Cheats to the limit. We have a we have a bit of a conundrum here. And that conundrum is: do we go in? I have a feeling that going in is a test. That if we go in, I feel like there's a dead body in there. I just feel like if we go in there, there'll be a dead body, and it will be really bad if we go in there. I feel like going in there would be bad, but maybe it wouldn't be bad. Do we go in there? Do we not go in there? Look, do we go in there, or do we not go in there? What do we do? You know what? I'm going to make a poll. Gritty says go in. I'm going to make a poll. I think I didn't do it right. Uh, hold on. Oop. Uh, let's make a poll. We're going to make a poll because I can't... Uh, new poll. Uh, go in the apartment. Yay or nay. Uh, do it. There may be evidence. Do it. For the case. Uh, don't. It's a trap. Okay. Uh, pulls up, everybody. I'm doing a pull because I, I just need to, we're, we're gonna, oh, oh. Okay, Colonel's like, always earn the side of going in there. Colonel's like, don't do it. I was like, of course you go in. You're not cool enough to take that stress. I can, uh, did I just save? I feel like I might've saved. Uh, oof. So I've always had the impression that Werewolf was way more, how do I put this? Do we have any HP items? We do not have any HP items, Voltail. We've got morale items for days, but we don't have any HP items. As long as nobody tries to punch me, I should be fine. If they, if, they, if I see shocking things, I should be fine because I've got a lot of morale. I've got morale for days. It's just I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, the pull is useless. I, I can't sit on a wonky chair. Yeah, Werewolf is way more fighty. Um, for me, it's not just that it's way more fighty. 
But how do I put this? I always felt like Werewolf was the World of Darkness game for people who didn't actually want to be conflicted, right? Like vampires have humanity, which could like real bad if they lose it. Wraith is Wraith. Like a lot of them have like, oh man, banality. A lot, a lot of the different ones have these things to go to deal with. But Werewolf was always like, oh yeah, my, my drawback is I just get even better at fighting. And I was like, okay, uh, I guess. And the thing is that in um, mythology, where being a werewolf is a curse, right? And it seems like all that kind of internal drama that for me is very much like part of a lot of those World of Darkness games just didn't seem to be there as much. It just seemed a bit more of a... Like your drawback is, get, is that you get better at doing the things you want to do in the first place. It seems a little... It always just seemed a little bit... Uh, like, a lot of werewolf players were like, yeah, we're good guys. We're the good guys. Everybody else are bad guys. And there was no, like, they did not really have a lot of internal conflict, is what I'm trying to tell you. And I don't know if that's, like, your impression, uh, or if we think this is, V5 continues with that or not. I, I would love your thoughts on that. Uh, I remember we are on the, uh, but the, the death scenes are so cool. Okay, so, let's look, I'm going to look at the results. Results, what do we got? Results say do it. Okay, everybody. The results say to do it. Um, okay. Uh, okay, we're, we're, we're gonna do it. Gonna go in there. Well, the drama of work was this. You were good at fighting. You were only good at fighting. There are a lot of aspects of life that is not fighting. Uh, so that's why they got rid of Changeling. I suppose, but... Most of the werewolf players and games I know were a little bit more D and D murder hobo and really did not have any problem solving all their problems with fighting. And I was like, oh, well, all right. What do we have here? A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure, a dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols, a broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes, and others. Hmm. I'm gonna tap on those mugs. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. Who is this person? Let's, okay. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. Hmm, what do I mean uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Hmm. Typical asshole. This person is unhappy. Hmm. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I've got one of these mugs, by the way. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Yeah, I'm going to whip out that yellow man mug and compare. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. Uh. The same humor, the same mocking lines. Grinny has said there's no dead body in there. I, I'm, I, I mean, we are cops, so I suppose if there's a dead body, we'd be like, oh... We found the dead body. There's the missing tin soldier. Whoever the lives here might have used the wording's container to dump his trash. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, the looks, the lieutenant looks at the mugs next to each other. Um, also, Werewolf 5 added Hauglosk and made a system for Harano. Hauglosk uses a similar system. So there's actually something to try and avoid, like humanity loss. Oh, that's cool. And no, Murder Hobo Werewolves are falling, or have already fallen to Hauglosk. Okay, okay, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. That's good to know, because I, you know, I kind of just want a little bit more, do you know what I mean, a little bit more spice. And it sounds like they put it in there, so that's and good. now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. Interesting. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Interesting. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Maybe. What if this job that we got was actually a way for the union head to give us information without giving us information? You know what I mean? Uh, Yellow Ant, has this turned into a dance hall stream? Pure rhythm. Uh, they fixed the Get a Fenris by declaring the entire tribe had fallen to Hauglosk. Oh. Yellow Man and, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 uh Yellow Man and, oh, I forgot his name. 
Uh, let's see. Do you personally think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. Mm. You could ask Everard who this person is once you're done with him. Yeah. So let's move on from the mugs. Okay, we're in here. We're doing the, the investigations. Whoever lives here admires fair-haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. Interesting. Interesting. I'm just gonna... Oh, a shirt. Inter, inter Soli dress shirt. And do you think it's a good shirt? Do you think it's good? Because, you know, I have a some questionable shirts in my life. What is this? Logic, good with numbers. Okay, oh, it's not bad. Do I, by the way, do I want to change my outfit? Right now I've got a lot of drama. Let's put on some logic, shall we? I feel like we don't need all of the drama. Uh, the esprit de corps, electrochemistry, reaction speed, conceptualization, not bad. Uh, uh, visual calculus, I feel like is probably better there. That's fine. Uh, uh, do I like my jacket? My jacket gives me a suggestion, but I'm not necessarily interviewing people right now. Uh, so how about if I put on my, like I can do my esprit de corps or my conceptualization. Yeah, let's just wear this one. That's, that's what we're doing. Okay. I feel like that makes us a little bit safer. Do a little bit of a quick save. Let's see what we got. You can almost feel the warmth of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rebishal, the suzerainty. Oh, what's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What's the sevenfold sun miracle? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. Hmm. <clears throat> old Revachol, Lieutenant, the old flag of the suzerain? Mm hmm. The tenant is an old fashioned guy. Mm. By old fashioned, he means very right wing. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bow to the flag. That's ridiculous. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with the sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. They also fix the Black Furies by letting men be Black Furies and making them mad about all injustice, not just anti-woman injustice. Oh, interesting. Yeah, a plus one endurance shirt would be really handy, wouldn't it? Granny says, right, my lovely streamer. <gasps> I'm gonna think about trying to sleep. I've got a wee little headache starting, oh no. And I'm tired from my turkey sliders. Love you, and I hope you get a, have a great thing saying. Thank you so much, Granny. Granny, by the way, it's so good to see you. I miss you, you're lovely, you're great. And also, can I sing you something? Granny, I'm gonna sing you something right now, okay? Are you ready? Just a little bit, little snatch of a thing. For you, Granny, and you'll know why. You'll know why. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? How they hypnotize, where'd you get those eyes? And if you want to know where uh, Gritty got those eyes, she stole them. <laughs> Uh, much love to you, Gritty. Much love. She stole them. <laughs> A book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks Lies Open. Huh. Hmm. I mean, I just feel... What is this? Ooh. Magnesium. 
That helps with morale, does not help with your physical body. Uh, Uno reversal, all those comments, super. Eee, I love that song. Hey, I'm glad you love it because I, I you know, I want to, I want to give you something cool, because I care. A small smooth suitcase, suitcase full of clothes. Guests are staying over. Hmm. Well, all right. We did get some info, and I wonder if this was like a something that our big boss wanted to wanted us to know, you know? Let's go back to the whirling in rags because we have some clues there. Um, yes. Just uh, gonna just note it. There's that woman out there. I'm not gonna talk to her right now. I don't have any desire to talk to this woman. Not at the moment. Uh, uh, wait, Trooper, before I go, yes. I need you to know that I actually ha have a jar of eyes pin. Wait, you have a jar of eyes tell me more about this and are they betty davis eyes would be uh you know i think all the boys think she's a spy she's got betty davis eyes that song by the way if you don't know the song betty davis eyes uh from the early 80s it's brilliant and you should know it so uh, what i wanted to share uh, I have not yet talked about tactic, strategy, and coloss. So, uh, they kind of fall underneath each other a little bit. Do I want to talk to these folks, or do I not want to talk to these folks? I'm going to talk to this guy. Kim Carnes, Volpez, thank you. And it's like, what, 81, 82? Something like that? Somewhere around there? Uh, ish? I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Uh, are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moves behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. Mm. Easy, Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. Hmm. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. Ooh. He said Mr. Everett sent you to law school. I represent the union and these men here. Don't make this personal. Oh, interesting. A very minor. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll talk later. Just thought I have a little, little moment there. Just a little moment. Just to, you know. Uh, I do want to talk to the cook, though. Investigate the kitchens. Oh, hello, dear. Hello. Here you are again. Uh, I, we have to go. Uh, go to sleep. Go to sleep, Grinny. Uh, they're not Betty Davis eyes, but the song made me think of my pen. I, I love that. So the the coloss uh, the coloss strategy tactics thing. So, as you may or may not know, you see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple block. It's painted blue. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Mm. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted, maybe. Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to uh, leave it for the moment. I'm going to go and... I would really like to find out about the soup, because I feel like there are soup situations here, but uh, we're going to go to sleep. You? Yeah. Uh, I saw another thing at the Whirling. Thing. Great. Yeah. I love those. So the phone line is dead? Yes. And the phone company is taking its sweet time sending Hey, Prax! It fix it. You're just in time. Just in time for some gaming talk. Well, that's pretty strange. Not strange. It's inconvenient. Is it true that there was foul play? Who told you that? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter. I just want to know who you suspect. Fine, yeah. It looked like someone had messed with the wiring. It was shortly after the hanging, but I don't know if it's at all related. Plenty of arseholes around here who aren't murderers. 
Hmm. If you do find out who cut the line, though, let me know so I can forward them the repair bill. All right. Uh, yeah. There's something else I wanted to ask you about. Yes. Uh, about my bill for tonight. Drop the twenty real. <sighs> Come on, man. It's late. Do I really have to pay you again? The breath catches in his chest. The light in his eyes snuffs out all at once. After a moment, he speaks. Do you have money tonight? Yes, I do. Then you really don't need a free room, do you? He shakes his head and stops as a strange new cruel light rekindles in his features. You know what? You're in luck because you don't have to ever pay me again. Uh, like the reel will be going up sometime tomorrow. Oh yeah, I've got actually, I've got to post my videos for the stream. I've got some uh, ad logistics to catch up. Wait, really? Are you serious? Perfectly serious. You don't have to pay me anything. Yeah, okay, what is that about? You don't have to give me any money at all. If you want a room, yes, you'll need to pay me, but you don't have to just give me money. Giving me money for a room is your choice. Wait, I still don't understand. Do I get a free room or not? No, you can choose to give me 20 real for a room, or you can choose not to. I don't care what you decide. Okay. I don't want to talk about this right now. You're kind of a jerk. Anything else you need? Uh, yeah, about my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? Yeah, fine. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. My goodness, for heaven's sakes. All right, goodbye. I can't believe it. Do you know what I mean? Like, that is ridiculous. I also feel like he's overcharged me because I wrecked the room that last time. So here's the thing, everybody. I can level up my stats, but I think that that's not what I need to do. What I think what I need to do is uh, increase my thoughts because uh, I think they're these thoughts that are really important to have. And the other one we really needed was, hold on. I really want this apricot chewing gum, but there's another one. I think it's the Jamrock Shuffle, which is, let's see. By now it's clear you like to look inside containers. That's true. You like to open doors and see what's behind them. That's also true. Maybe secrets, maybe more juicy containers. Let's be honest. You like all containers. I do. Trash cans, utensil trays, manholes, coat pockets, secret containers left by the Philippine kings, Philipp Philippian kings that hold forbidden relics. Okay, you haven't come across one of those yet, but one day, wait. Is that why you're so hell-bent on opening containers? Do you think you'll find the Holy Scepter and the Orb de Montagne? Probably. I mean, I'm, I'm super interested in that. So I think the Jamrock Shuffle might be the one. Um, but we have another option here. Uh, actual art grade. I want to get that one too so I can become an art cop. I want to be an art cop. But I think I have to get the... Uh, Seems like the point of this game is victory. The absence of somebody's all watching me. I always feel that somebody's watching me, and I have no privacy. Whoa! I always feel that somebody's watching me. Tell me, is it just a dream? Ba -ba -bow. Uh, thank you for that follow, uh, Bancho, my beloved. Thank you for that follow. Welcome in. Hang out. Have a seat. Um. 25 pound, 20.5 pound turkey, mashed potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes, sauteed green beans and shallots, stuffing cranberry sauce. Ooh, sounds good. That's what Hawkeye says too. We did our used, usual glaze ham, baked potatoes, corn of the cob, candied carrots. Uh, I will be having, I, I'm gonna be making salmon and potatoes and frozen peas, and then I'll portion it up so that I have eight portions of dinner for the next eight days. Well, today and seven more. I don't really do anything. I mean, I live by myself. I don't do a lot of stuff for the holidays. I hang out with y'all. That's what I do. Um, so this is all about victory. I don't know about that one. Per that's a uh, precarious world. Uh, is that all that I have? 
that is all that I have. So we're gonna do the we're gonna do the jam rock shuffle. Is what we're gonna do, uh, and we're gonna internalize that. I'm gonna have minus one esprit de corps, but uh, I'm gonna get those things going. And if I can get those things going, I'm gonna feel good about my life. Uh, and once, and then I want to get my I want to get my. Uh, we only have four more left, and I want to get my actual art degree so I can be an art cop. And then I want to do this apricot chewing gum scented one because that's about my past. And I really feel like I need to know it. Uh, yeah, that's what I got going on right now for those things. I do need to up my stats, but for the moment, um, we'll hold off on those stats until we get become an art critic. Because I just kind of feel like we need to become an art critic. I, that just uh, seems reasonable. Um, I don't think I have uh, been outside. Oh, I wanted to make game design. Nothing on the front page rings a bell. Strange. Hmm. So look, you all know, right, that I'm going to... Uh, turn Coloss into an actual book. That is a thing that I'm going to do. Uh, and I am gonna need to like, uh, I'm gonna have to, it's, I, I, look, I've been hanging out, I was reading some uh, people talk about fate again, and they say these things, and uh, the things they say make me think, see you in the morning, thank you, make me think that I really, really need to make it very clear that I am not doing the same things that like the, the base assumptions of how I'm framing this is not, uh, they should not no carry the same, in its frame. they should not carry the same base assumptions that many of them tend to have. You see some lights shimmering outside, but it's difficult to make out the outlines of the buildings below. Dark phantoms with many tiny eyes chaotically arranged and not looking at you. Hmm. Yeah, so what I'm trying to tell you is uh, that there are a number of... The fan is spinning. Pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. Okay. Pull on the, the light bulbs? Ooh. are on. Okay, let me just turn those off, though. Are off again. Yeah, and, and I'm, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Uh, there, oh, there are bottles here. Uh -huh. uh, we're gonna take these bottles because I feel like they're gonna keep us alive, uh, living. And then I get to just also just chat with you while we do it. Uh, so... There are these assumptions, and I don't think these assumptions are necessarily, many of these things are not actually written in the fate book, but they're things that, the ways in which people have, like, it's the sort of a common way of understanding fate in ways that are not necessarily what I'm doing. And I was thinking that I'm going to need to, like, create some kind of, uh... yeah, I think the, I think the thing I'm going to do is going to have a lot of, or maybe it'll be like a second book, perhaps, like a like a supplement. But I, I'm gonna have to talk Next about. To Cove. I'm gonna talk about gaming, actually. I think in in ways that I think will be important. Um, because I was thinking about how. It hangs on the bottom wall. Oh. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expressions. Hmm. Ah, uh, encyclopedia. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna go to bed and then we're gonna heal up is what we're gonna do. Uh, that's, that's our goal. The so- It's still cold from the broken window and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it going to sleep so the bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window the 
metrous creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. Mm. Here Kate. we are again, my broken bard. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No, you have to stay always half aware of yourself. Okay. Creepy limbic system. Creepy. Anyhow, there are all these things people say about fate. And I know I had this disagreement with somebody once who, who says, well, it's the rules themselves that make all the difference. Like if the rule is the rule, the rule is the rule. But I actually think the interpretation of the rule or the framing of the rule changes things quite a lot. And I was just reading on the Reddit and somebody was saying this thing about fate that I was like, yeah, 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 I know that people say this, but I don't do that. And it was, remember that fate points belong to the player, not the character. It's important for you to remember, to, for the player to know that these are their personal things that belong to them. They do not exist in the game. And I just don't run it that way. I run it as these fate points as being representative of things that actually belong to the character themselves. Inner will, uh, grit, determination, a bunch of things. Um, but I don't treat them as being completely meta currency. I just don't. And I was thinking about how I, if I'm going to go and do this Kolos book, I'm going to really need to do some kind of... If somebody has never played Fate before, they'll be fine. But if people have played Fate before, I'm going to need to put things in there to get them to understand the framing. I had the same thought about compels. Uh, because somebody was... I was explaining that what I really like to do in Fate, which I think Fate is really good at, even though it may not be how people talk about it, is I think it's really good for character simulation. And somebody's like, well, but what's character simulation? I was like, well, it's about, if simulation is about exploring something and figuring out how it goes without necessarily forcing it one way or the other, just seeing how it's gonna go, you can simulate many things. Many people do, when they do simulationism, they tend to do a world. They're really interested in like simulating a world. Uh, whereas I'm really interested in simulating a character. And they were like, and I said, and. Character simulation is different from uh, character narrativism uh, because with a character narrativism, you have an arc that you want to accomplish, right? You've got a, you have a goal, a beginning, middle, and end that will be satisfying. Whereas character simulation is we have no idea really where it's going to go. You're going to just find out. Um, and it's a different way of approaching things and thinking about things. And this person said to me, as if it were a gotcha, well, then how do you deal with, uh, like, compels, right? Sort of like... Uh, how do you deal with that? And I was like, oh, so this is actually also interesting because in the uh, mess in the reddits, some people are like, yeah, I really don't like. So there are two different types of compels in fate. There are decision based compels and there are situation based compels. And so a situation based compel is about like because you have you have the trouble. Wanted, you know, being chased by the mob, I will give you a I'll give you a fate point if because it makes sense about this time that the mob might show up to like harass you and it'd be like, yeah, so that's like a situation-based compel. It's about the world around you. And then a decision-based compel is where I would say, hey, you have a kleptomaniac as a trouble, and you're in a room with a lot of really expensive things and interesting things. And I think your character would probably go and try to steal one of these things because you're a kleptomaniac, and this is not going to turn out well for you. Yes or no. And a lot of people feel very uncomfortable with the decision-based compels. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, I just, you know, I avoid those. I mostly just do the, the, the situation-based compels. But for me, doing character simulationism, uh, decision-based compels are like everything. And it's interesting because I don't see them. And somebody's like, well, how does that score with being a simulationist? And I was like, GURPS has, like a lot of simulationist games have mental disads that you can trigger. So it's actually just totally in line with the idea of this is like a problem that your character has. It might rear its head now. Do you want to try to suppress that problem, right? Or do you are you going to give into it? Let's find out what happens. Let's see. So I was thinking a lot about the ways in which my framing of fate is quite often different from the ways in which other people are framing it, even if the rules themselves are the same. Some rules are a little bit different. And so I think I'm going to really need to put like a 
uh, I'm going to have to do something wherein I explain what the frame, like my framing for fate and how that will result in a different style of game than people might be expecting. I just, I was just thinking about how I have to do that. Yeah. 30 minutes. Oh, thank you. It's, yeah, logic where it's all in the game. You're not cooperating, brother man. It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety, but you cannot because of the pain. I don't think my limbic system is my friend. That pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage lately. Sorry. Every cell in your body is moaning in agony, asking, what did we ever do to you? Sorry, cells, it's all me, it's my fault. Now, you're finally thinking about something other than yourself. Let's see how far that'll get you. These are just my, these are my just desserts. I will endure this pain with dignity. Oh, please, where is that blessed nothingness, that sweet oblivion? I'm an artist and liver damage is my art. I think, I think I need medical attention, actually. Oh, yes. They'll check you out, give you some pills, make it all okay. The Wonder Maker. Crone's mm. like, your limbic system is your best friend when you're near death and need desperate action. That's probably true, actually. Don't be stupid, Harry. It's not happening. They don't make new kidneys and livers in hospital. All you've got to do is pray to God it passes and stare at the flickering darkness. Logic's like, this voice sounds like it needs to be screaming, exterminate, exterminate. Mm-hmm. Oh, that ancient reptilian brain. You're just stuck here in the half world. Could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? You know, I will. Uh, I'm looking at people all the time. I like them. Sure you do. They're all so friendly, aren't they? Make it till you make it. Some of them are. Some of them are nice. Others are scared. See volition? At least they're interesting. Yeah. Each one has a process just like Max, you. am I winning winning? Women in the space between their ears, full of secrets. Just watch Planes, Trains, Automobiles. Oh, that's but that's a throwback. Max, I think I'm gonna go after I get off of stream today and start making food, more food. I'm gonna go check out that Pendragon solo adventure because I think, cause you know, tomorrow uh, I'll be doing a going solo cause uh, the cast is off for uh, the gamblers. They're off for Thanksgiving. So, but I might, so I might do that Pendragon one. You said it was really good. So I'm gonna go look into it and see if I can uh, get it and then do it. So you say it's okay. So if it's so good then I'm gonna do it. What do you think okay. you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness. Look at all these lights. Blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts. You're just pretending that you're asleep. Even to yourself. While the world goes on without you. Yeah, John Candy. Let it. Let it. You too. Look, okay, excuse me. Just for the record, I, Trooper SJP, am controlling my little character dude, and I'm trying to get him to be in a better place. I'm trying to get him some hope, maybe some clean out his liver a little bit, trying to get him to be, to survive and be better. You are not helping. You're being mean to him. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. I know it's not how depression works. I know. I'm trying little bit by little bit, little bit of cognitive behavioral therapy. Just trying to get him to like... Poor guy, we're gonna save. Quick save. Just want him to be a little... 
I've got no experience points. I just want him to... I just want him to get... I want the world to be a better place for him. You know what I mean? And that is not necessarily what is happening, but it is what it is. Uh, that was my... I don't think it really was a dream. I think we're on Wednesday, right? Right? Yeah, I think we're on Wednesday. So we're going to go out... Oh, also, we're going to have to, we got a lot to do in our life, you know. Uh, so, what I wanted to tell you was, also, there was that woman here. Right there. Oh, what are you doing? She's downstairs. So anyway, um, I was just thinking about how to, that I think something that will be really, really important is going to be about framing and how to frame what I'm doing there. But this, um, this led to an interesting conversation. Good morning. Who is this? We have some people here we've not seen before. Uh, who are you people? The woman nope. in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. Oh, that seems bad. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Why? A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Uh, I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? You're definitely not the cavalry. All right, but you're a patrol officer of the RCM. Yes, I am. Okay. You know, I'm a cop too. No. Yeah. You're the real deal. Oh. Thanks, Kim. It's hard to tell whether he's sarcastic oh. or sincere. But if you had to guess, you would say the lieutenant is being sarcastic. Hmm. Uh, is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? Uh, have I wronged you? I've done that to a lot of people. No, you haven't wronged me. It's okay. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? I feel like something happened and I don't know what it is. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? Okay, so what precinct What precinct are you from? What precinct? She's from my precinct. Am I from? God, he doesn't know. Fucking deranged lunatic. The sunglasses, a sunglasses wearing man pushes through his teeth. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Okay, goodbye. So that was awkward and strange. I'm going to change my clothes while we're chatting. So the conversation, right? Something strange just happened here, but he does, just doesn't know. I just don't know. So we're going to go and uh, we're going to change our outfit. We're going to get uh, some esprit de corps. Uh, because esprit de corps is good. We're going to have some... Composure. We're going to have some. Yeah, that's what we got. I don't know how much this will help us, but. Uh... What does this give me? Visual calculus. OK, well, let's talk to the other guy. So was that the Colossus? Have you talked about the text? No, now I'm transitioning to tactic strategy because these things are sort of related, basically. Um, Okay. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. Yeah, I don't mean that as a metaphor. Uh uh Looks don't matter, it's one on the inside that does. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm going by here. Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on you. Do you all know me? It's not just this week. What do you want? Okay, what's There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head? A similar but 
different things. Right, okay. Uh, Kim, who is this guy? Mm, I'm not getting involved in this. Really? It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. Okay. Well, I'm gonna... And we're basically done with Kolos-ish. The tactical strategy is going to sort of feed back in a little bit. So, uh, Esprit de Corps. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. All right, tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... Uh, of what? To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? Ah! Mm! Mm! Wandering DM, you live! So good. Uh, so, first off, he's going to ask me what precinct I belong to. And uh, I have to remember what it is. It's been a while. Uh, and I wonder if I can look at things. Hold on. Uh, uh, tomorrow, I'm streaming at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow on my channel. Can I just check uh, some things? Because I might be able to check, uh, you know, uh, Maybe where what what precinct I'm in is might be in my notes somewhere. Uh, could be a a thing while we're here. Oh, okay, good. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, so there was a converse. So uh, Matt Coville is doing a new kickstarting a new book, and it's described as being cinematic, tactical, RPG, fantasy action, right? And uh, I was in a discord and somebody's like the conversation basically went four giant fans in the basement yeah uh basically people said um we're having a conversation how they don't think that they think that tactics a tactical tactical and cinematic are uh exact opposites you cannot actually have something that is both tactical and cinematic because those things are opposed, which I don't actually think so. Um, but they were sort of talking about it and they were sort of thinking of tactics as being like hyper detail oriented and uh, cinematic as being improvisatory, never doing the same thing twice and uh, basically kind of rules light and by the seat of your pants. And I was like, I just don't, those are not how I would define those things. I don't actually even think that they're in the same category. Like, I don't think they're the same axis of comparison at all. So that's not, not what I'm thinking, right? That's, uh, I don't think so. Uh, and the, go, they got the water out, good. Uh, so here I am, right? And we're having this whole conversation well, they're having this conversation about tactics and tactics and versus cinematic. And I was like, you know, I actually kind of don't think of these things as being, yeah, I don't, mm, mm. I would think of them as different axes, right? Like I would think of like cinematic, the opposite of cine like the being contrasted with realist. So you think about like the spy genre, you could either have like a cinematic spy or a realist spy, right? So cinematic versus realist and tactical, I contrast with strategic. So you could theoretically have like a tactical cinematic game, a tactical realist game. You could have uh, a cinematic, a strategic cinematic game or a strategic uh, realist game. That's what I was saying. Um, and Mechtron has proven that you can do tactical and cinematic combined. Yeah. And they sort of looked at me like I was, what I was saying was ridiculous. And then somebody said, I have seen war games use strategy, but I've never seen an RPG use strategy. 
Like, I don't even, I can't even imagine how an RPG would use strategy. And so I had to think about what I mean by strategy and what I think that's doing, right? And so I said, well, no, 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 you are not spamming Wandering DM. I'm happy to have you here, right? Because you've got the ins the insurance inspector coming. Uh, yeah. I know. I now know how fueled it is to try to empty a sinking boat with a bucket. Oh, that's rough. So I was thinking about, I was like, okay, look. So for me, right, tactics versus strategy. Tactics are the choices you make in a more immediate or short-term space to get a more immediate or short-term goal. Whereas strategy are the choices you make to get long-term goals. Tactics versus strategy. Battle versus war, right? Winning the battle, winning the war. And uh, I said, while a lot of tactical choices tend to be combat-based in RPGs, they don't have to be. Uh, but it's interesting to me because a lot of strategic choices are often not combat-based, although they also can be. And they can manifest all sorts of different ways, right? So, for example, the gameplay of planning out your character and how they want to multi-class and all those things, you can get a prestige class later in D&D 3.5. That's strategy, right? That's a strategic component of D&D 3.5 is like the long-term planning of how you're going to raise your character. Um, Blades in the Dark has the whole the whole way in which you deal with your your crew and how do you want to sort of like increase your crew, that's also strategy. Um, tags in Monster Hearts is strategy. Any kind of game that has a corruption mechanic that increases over time, um, that's also, like basically, a, there's a lot of strategy in RPGs. It's not all just immediate. There's a lot of long-term things that happen in, in RPGs. It, I actually think it's quite common. And uh, ex when exactly to run away in Call of Cthulhu, um, how do you use your resources? Krellen's like, what? RPG strategy all the time. Strategy is making sure you have good repaired gear, the proper level selections, enough healing potions and wands, the right plan to infiltrate the dungeon, right? But also that you start making friends with people in certain ways so that you can get other things later. Like, I just feel like there's a lot of strategy in RPGs. Uh, something like... Um, any, I said any kind of resource management is also strategy for the most part. Unless, unless your resources reset at the end of a scene, any kind of resource management is also going to be strategy. Do you think about D&D 4E? When do you use your daily power? That's strategy. That's not just tactics, right? So resource management, um, yeah, a lot of things. I, I just feel like there's a lot of strategy in RPGs. And... Uh, Vampire scheming is often strategic too. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes, yeah. Especially if you're discussing beforehand with your group which of of, uh, of which flag should you retreat. Absolutely. I think there's like a lot of that. And uh, Max, I feel like there's as much uh, as the game that players bring to the table. Yeah, absolutely. And also, some games just have strategic strategic rules. And I'm thinking now about probably Pendragon. Uh, anything that has generational sort of um, play or long-term projects. There, there are games that have built into them long-term projects. That's also gonna be about strategic planning as well. So the idea that RPGs don't have uh, strategy, I thought was just a little weird. I thought that was a strange thought. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like there's just, there's just, uh... I was also thinking about how, for example, in good society, you make rumors that then can then sort of come into play later down the line, that's also strategy. Like there are elements to uh, good society that are strategic. I mean, like, I just feel like there are a lot of things, both mechanically and non-mechanically that are strategic in RPGs all the time. Uh, generational realm estate management systems also, absolutely, absolutely. I don't know what they meant. Crown's like, logistics is strategy. I don't know what RPGs people play that don't involve logistics. Yeah, I just think there's, and so here's the thing that was, so here's the thing that goes back to Kolos, which is about my interpretation of um, fate. Or some of, the, some of the shifts that I've done. What I realized that when it comes to fate, there are, there are not that many actual rules changes that I've made. Very few of them have I done. Most of the rules are exactly the same. I've added a couple of things. Like, you know, 
mostly everything that I've done for Colos is within the the realm, technically within the realm of fate. I I have, however, made a couple of changes. One, and what I would say to you is that it would be easy to say that what I'm doing is taking things from the non-diegetic or meta level and placing them in the game, right? So like fate points are a representation of something that, that is belonging to your character. Uh, stress is not just a pacing mechanism, it is something that is actually happening to your character, that these things, that I'm doing these things uh, in character. Um, fate as written, when you have consequences, they clear in um, meta time, not in game time, right? So uh, a minor consequence clears after a scene. Once you put, you have to put the scene, you have to put the, the uh, consequence in recovery, but once you put it in recovery, it clears after a scene. Uh, a moderate consequence clears after a session. A major, a severe consequence clears after a milestone. So that's all sort of meta time. And I actually just put them, one of, one of the rules changes I made is that I put it into game time. So a mild consequence clears after two days. Uh, a moderate consequence clears after two weeks. And a severe consequence clears after two months. Uh, and then the other, the other, and I use... Uh, downshifting, uh, the other shift that I do is that the rules as written say that once a scene ends, your stress clears. And that's partly how people, why people think of it as not being a thing that actually exists. It's just a pacing mechanism for like cinematic pacingness or whatever. But actually I changed that. I was like, well, it is something that actually happens. It does exist in the game. Stress, physical stress are like cuts and bruises, bumps, sprains, uh, like bruised ribs, things that hurt, uh, that are not great, but are not, they're above, they're below the level of granularity that we are gonna give up bonuses or penalties to them, but they are there. And they and having too many of them are not gonna be good for you, right? Um, and then mental stress are things like being too tired, being distracted, being angry, those things that make it hard for you to, like these are things that are happening. And unlike the rules, I do think my interpretation does is still doable in there. They do not automatically clear the minute a scene is over. It's not like, okay, scene's over, you get all of your stress back. I just don't do that. Um, you don't have to roll. I will not make, you have to roll to, to put a consequence in recovery. You don't have to roll to clear your stress. You do, however, have to do something in character to do it. You just have to do it. So um, something has to happen in game because it's an in game thing. It must be dealt with in game, which means now what that thing is is pretty open, but. For example, um, Regina in City of Light and Shadow was not sleeping and had a whole bunch of stress. And she was sitting with a bunch of stress that was not clearing. And I was like, are you going to go to sleep? She's like, no. And I was like, okay, your stress doesn't clear. If she'd gone to sleep, all of her stress would have cleared. That would have been fine. Or if she'd gone to, and I think at one point in time, she finally got some first aid uh, from one of their medics, and so the physical stress cleared, but the mental stress was still there because she wasn't sleeping. The minute she slept, she got her stress, it all cleared. You don't have to roll for it, it's totally fine. You just have to do something in character to represent clearing that stress. And it could be any number of things, whatever would work for your character. And so, uh, uh, thank you, Ten, thank you, Ten. Oh, I am drinking, no, Max, I am drinking uh, Jaritos Mango, which is uh, a, a Mexican soda, and this is their mango one, it's delicious. Uh, show me a game that doesn't have strategy involved, please, I'm waiting, yeah, right? So something in the story that makes sense. Yes, that's it, and I'm very open. Like, what might clear that stress for you is, is like having a good, like having, playing a game of cards with your friends, right? Basically, there's gotta be something that happens and then, we, then we'll clear it. It's not just a picking, pacing mechanism. It's not plot armor, right? It's actually something that's happening to your character, so I want it to be cleared in character, but it's gonna be easy. Uh, that scene was five minutes ago. Oh, okay, five, thank you, five. Here's what we're gonna do, by the way. Oh, that's right, I need to know, what is my, I think I'm the 57th? 57th? I think even in this fictional reality, the 57th would still be my station. Oh. My condolences. The man with sunglasses replies dryly. Go ahead, have another guess. The 41st. Okay, okay, that's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives me a long, meaningful look and adds. Somewhere good. So by the way, I want to finish this thought about, about 
so there was that thing about strategy versus tactics, and I realized something about what I'm doing with Fate that that Colos that I will tell you in a second. Um, let's talk more about that hypothetical Station Forty One you mentioned. Okay. Oh, the hypothetical four one. Yeah. Let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. Not too busy. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's oh. that for a thought experiment? Okay. I mean, Kim's cooler than I'm you. Sure is fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of this thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. Okay. The lieutenant is silent. Uh, you seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. Would you now, or would I be cramping your style? Never mind. I mean, partner. Uh, actually, I shouldn't have called you my partner. Kim's my partner. He's going to know. I'm not your partner. The disunion is temporary. A little premonition for you, Lieutenant. Sooner or later, probably sooner, your new friend tells you he doesn't need you. He will then suggest you should fuck off. Wow. When that happens, I suggest you take his advice. He adds bitterly. The lieutenant merely bows his head in response. We're talking to somebody who I think I work with. I think this might be... I, I'm going to suspect the person I'm talking to is from the police station that I am sta assigned to, but I have no memory. Okay, well, uh, who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but police officers. The man pauses for dramatic effect. Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and, and get this, and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. Wow. With some regular barring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, who is the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Okay, okay, so, I see. Okay, this, yeah, Krell says, not drinking too, not being bad guys, and being not bad guys sounds fake, totally sounds fake. Fake. Do so you want to me more about him or, or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. Oh. You are not the son of Lang. Thank you. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling dished out by the sunglassed man. Thank you, one. Okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. Yeah, this, this is the final convo. Uh, so... Do you have a crime to solve? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. Let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. I feel like you're being sarcastic. This isn't helping. She shakes her head and looking at the man with the sunglasses disapprovingly. Yeah, okay, well, I can't imagine anymore. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second. Feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. I could say got some questions for you, my cop, but he knows I'm a cop, and I know he knows I'm a cop. Uh, I'm gonna just yeah. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. Like Krasmazov. Yeah, sort of. Okay, I get the I difference. Do. Like after he got run over or something. Why are you being... Okay, why are you being mean? So now will you answer some questions for me? No. Don't you have to? No, he doesn't. If I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. Everybody's clinically depressed in this game. Uh, If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things? Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Well, clearly I did a good enough job to convey the rhythm. You did. You did. Come on, Jean. Okay. Say things. I want to hear you say things. I feel this is a trap. You hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Okay. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. 
a man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, why am I even telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? He gives me an odd look. It's like you felt it would be intellectually stimulating and would lead somewhere. A custom even? Strange. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is Next it? like next like so it was the only choice? Yeah. Uh let's talk about the hangman again. Okay, why not? Let's do the old thing over again. We are not wasting time. There is no time. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. A man is no. hanged. Do you know who hanged him? Yeah, no. I can see that. I yeah. don't know. Why? Oh my uh, God, there's more. Okay. okay. something more? What is it? I'll see you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. What is wrong with you? I just, like, I've got to hit that okay. X. The man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? <laughs> Chronic historiosis, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess it was kind of weird. Yes. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy. And you'll probably get laughed at. But still. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're in the same station. Yes. Just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. I think it is true. I'm getting music. That's weird. I'm going to ask him if we're in the same station. I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head looking like he really is having trouble leaving this shit. Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What you say? Okay. Okay? Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, I'm out of here. He's a jerk. So here's the thing, y'all. I believe that this is our stopping point. These people are here giving us trouble. Uh, you know, yeah. Kim, do you have anything to tell me? No, you don't. All right, this is it. This is our stop. So I can tell you the thing about strategy. Let me save. Save game. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you this thing to finish that whole thought about uh, strat uh, tactics and strategy, right? There's a whole thing and I'm gonna finish it up for you, uh, confirm. So here's the thought. I had always been thinking that a lot of the things that I was doing in like adjusting the framework of, of fate was about being more, basically being more immersed, right? Sort of many people sort of play fate in a way that sort of brings you into writer mode rather than actor mode that is more narrativist rather than simulationist. And I was always thinking of what I was doing as being things that would like place you more in simulationist mode, which allows for a bit, uh, bit easier to stay in actor mode, which I enjoy. It's all very good. But I also realized something else. What I realized was I was also increasing the strategic potential of fate, right? That if in fate... All of your stress clears at the end of the, at the end of each episode, uh, after each scene, each conflict. If your consequences clear in meta time, into the into the uh, scene cleared, in the episode cleared, those things which are meant, I think, meant to be narrativist and all that kind of stuff, right, or cinematic, all those things, also reduce the strategy of the game. If you're going to have a consequence for two months in game time, that means something different. It also means you have to make a choice. I said to my players, and this was really interesting. I said, I said, you know, like you've got some of these some big consequences, and they're like, oh, it's going to take so long to clear them. I was like, right. Or you can always lay low, and we can just fast forward time two months, and then they'll, be, they'll all be gone. And they're like, what's the catch? I was like, well, the catch is. Your characters are not doing anything for two months. They're resting and they're recuperating, but 
your enemies are going to be doing things in those two months. They're going to be advancing their goals. So is it strategically in your best interest to let them do things unmonitored so that you can clear these consequences? Right? You've got a broken leg. You're going to, you're not going to be running around doing resistance stuff. You're going to be chilling. Right? Or do you not want to do that? Like, and, and, uh, having that stress be something that you actually have to take some time to do something about means you have to ask yourself, do I want to actually take some time out and clear this stress? Or do I not have time? I need to actually stay up. I can't go to sleep yet. I can't take time out to rest with my friends because I need to keep pushing. So that a lot of those things that I'm doing are not just about moving it from narrativism to simulationism, but it's also about increasing strategic choices uh, in the game as well. So not everything is so immediate. And I just, it was just, a, it was just a realization I had about uh, one of the things that I was doing with my sort of reframing of the, and, and sort of some of the, the rules tweaks that it, and also side note, sorry, I, I forgot this. There's another thing that I do, uh, that I do that is not in the rules. I do um, sticky boosts. So in, in uh, Fate, you can create boosts, right? You can get boosts. And those boosts, if you get a boost, a boost is supposed to last for your next turn. Uh, and advantages that you create are not supposed to last very long either. They're supposed to last for like the scene. A boost is supposed to last for like a turn. Like once your scene ends, all those boosts go away. And I do something that I, I'm calling sticky, sticky aspects. That if you create an aspect, it is not going to go away at the end of the scene. If you create a boost, it's not going to go away at the end of, it's not going to go away the very next turn. It will go away when it makes sense within the world to go away. So for example, if you use your criminal contacts to get fake papers, those fake papers are just, are not going to go away at the end of the scene. They're not going to even go away at the end of the session. They're going to go away when the Nazi authorities changed the stamps on the passports and now they're not going to work anymore. So I keep aspects and uh, like boosts and advantages around longer than the, when the game recommends because I want the players to be able to build up strategic reserves, right? To sort of go for a strategic plan. If everything goes away at the end of the turn or the end of the scene, they can't do long-term strategic planning. And because this is like an investigative game with like setting up things, I want them to be able to set up things for the future and taking down, um, like they did it like in our game Coloss, they took down people because they'd been building up resources and advantages over months. And then finally like, they undermined this, they undermined that, they did this, they did that. And that then allowed them to do um, some kind of larger move, right? But that's that strategy. Also, the way that I create factions. Um, I saw a lot of different faction options in uh, people. A lot of people, different people have done factions in different ways, but none of them did what I wanted. What I wanted was strategic choices, right? So I created a faction system that brings in strategic choices. So I realized that what I was doing in my version of sort of my... Um, my changes to fate was not just about increasing immersion and increasing actor stance possibilities and increasing simulationism. It was also about increasing strategic choices. So that was my big realization that I wasn't, I was doing two different things at the same time. So that was my big realization that I wanted to share with you, which then uh, covers all of the topics for today. Da -da -da -da. Uh, Bad things, Mikey, bad things. Yep. They never did lay low, did they? Um, they did a little bit. Sometimes they, I, they've laid low for like, they laid wood for like about two weeks or so. Uh, and I also do one more thing, and that is uh, in rules as written in fate, base rules, when it clears, it just clears, right? So it, it will take that whole time to clear. I have instituted a thing, which I think was a suggestion somewhere, but. Um, Step, step down mechanics. So in Fate, you've got like a severe, a moderate, a mild. And after the scene, the mild clears. B done, right? Uh, and then after the session, the moderate clears. After the next uh, uh, milestone, the severe clears. But the severe stays there in that spot until that severe, until that major milestone happens. 
What I do is I use a step down method where in two days, two weeks, two months, right? If let's say you have your entire, all of your consequence slots are full because it's bad for you. That's really dangerous. After, if they're in recovery, if you can get them all in recovery, after two days, that bottom consequence clears and the ones above them shift down and then you rename those consequences. So if, for example, you have a broken leg at the two months, uh, after, well, they, sh they will shift down when, the, when you get the time. So after, so you two months at severe, but two weeks out, if that space is clear, it'll shift down to the two weeks, the moderate slot. And you'll probably rename it from broken leg to um, something like uh, walks with a walks with a cane, right, or something like that. And then two days out, if your mild is clear, it'll shift down, and you'll rename it again to like walks with a limp, right. And after two days, it's done, right. So you get to rename that consequence as it shifts down, but that also means. After two weeks out, you will not have that severe consequence sitting there anymore, and that severe consequence slot will free up, right? So I basically, I shift down the, it involves a little bit of um, bookkeeping and sort of like just keeping track of when it's gonna be two weeks out, when it's gonna be two days out or whatever. But I like that because it allows that, it allows you to go from having a broken leg to having like a bad limp to, to like just having like a little sore, like you get to sort of, you get to see the healing process, right? Or you have like racked with nightmares and then you get like, you know, uh, insomnia to like poor sleep, right? Like you can like, you get to reframe how these things work. And I really like that. I feel it, it hits more simulationism for me, but it also allows them, basically one might say that the changes I made are harsher on the players, but I also made a lot of choices that are easier on the players that give them a bit more um that are kinder to them in some ways like it's just it's just a diff slightly different paradigm anyway so i just was realizing that a lot of the things that i do are about strategic choice as well as tactical choice uh and yeah yeah that's 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 what i that's what i was thinking about and i'm just thinking again that i want to make sure that i can uh, when I write up the book, I'm probably gonna have to make a little like a, I need to, I mean, I'm gonna have to name it, right? So just like fate is an extension of fudge, I'm gonna have to name this thing that I do. And I'm gonna have to give it a different name. It's gonna be like a fate something or a something fate. So I'm gonna have to give it some kind of name that distinguishes it from fate in general, because fate fans who really like that other style will be very irritated by my game. And I want to signal that it's not the same. And I think I just need to make a kind of like a, a little slim guide to playing in this style that I'm talking about. And I'll just have it attached to uh, the Coloss book. Anyway, that's what I was thinking about. Yeah, okay, I'm going. The Fate of Trooper, Troop Fate. I was thinking like, like I was thinking like the Fate Grinder, or I'm still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it, but you know, I'm gonna get there. Uh, call it, don't call it Fate, call it Destiny. Uh, real Fate's too judgy. Like I just want something that'll, uh, I was thinking about like a fatalism. I don't know, I'm still working on it. Something that like indicates this, it has its roots in this system, but that there's a reframing that changes the vibe quite a bit. So I've gotta, I've gotta think about it. Yeah, I was thinking about, I was thinking about fatalism, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. That said, I gotta, faded, faded. Fatalism is a dangerous name. Yeah, I've got. To, I have to think about it. I was thinking about like fate grinder or, or fate. I'm trying to find a thing that will do its thing. That said, we are going to raid somebody though because it is time to raid somebody. And oh, Pesephoroff is up. We're going to raid Pesephoroff. Uh, and this is our raid command. If you want to give some love over there, and oh, let me just uh, put this in here. Boom, boom. We will raid in a moment. So here's our raid command. Uh, you can find me tomorrow at 7 p.m. where I'll be doing the Pendragon solo uh, adventure, going solo, solo RPG, solo RPG adventure. Saturday at noon Eastern on my channel here, I'll be starting up Rain World, our first session of Rain World for our PS4 gaming. Uh, there will be no Carousel Court 
on Sunday. So the next time you'll find me after that will be here again on Thursday for uh, Disco Elysium. That's what we're going to do. I'm really excited. And thank you very much uh, for everything. And thank you for being here. Thank you for being lovely. I, you have my thanks for our Thanksgiving. And so let's go raid and say hi to uh, Persephiroth. Everybody, I'll catch you later. Bye.